Welcome to another edition of Beyond the Game. I'm your host, Stephen Hayes, and here we have a historic, I'm excited for this guest, Alabama State women basketball head coach, Ms. Frida Freeman Jackson. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thanks Thank for you so me. much for, no problem. Thank you so much for the time. <laughs> and I'm, I'm excited to, to learn. That's really, you know, the, the excitement that I have for this interview today. Um, okay. Clearly, you know, you, you've been around and you, you know, you've been a historic coach for Alabama State and you've done some amazing things. And I believe this is your 25th season. Yes, going to my 25th season. Going into your 25th that? season. Yes, yes man, <laughs> going into your 25th <laughs> season. And, and obviously with the game of basketball evolving the way that it has, but what, what has stuck true to you? And how are you able to continue that passion that you have for the game? Obviously, you were a former player, but now being a coach, like you said, going into your 25th season, what has what has held true to you to be able to continue to go and, and do as well as you've been doing? Well, I'm a traditionalist. Uh, I really believe in uh, doing things the right way. Uh, you just can't change because, you know, some of these student athletes, they like to do certain things. I'm a strong disciplinarian. I really emphasize academics. I tell them all the time when I recruit a player, I let the parents know that it's academics first, then basketball, and you better pray like heck that you got some social, social life left. But uh, I try to keep it real. Uh, I work my girls pretty hard, and uh, you know you have to make some adjustment. Uh, you talk about 25 years later or what have you, but at the same time, I pretty much try to recruit girls that fit into the scheme of things of what we try to do at Alabama State. And we all about character and doing the things the right way. And, and, and clearly it's tried and true. You're over 300 career wins, well over 300 career wins. And I believe your percentage is, I believe, about 49 or 50 percent roughly. And like I said, you, I believe, three championships, three uh, SWAT championships. Is that correct? Well, regular season, and we, we probably have about six in all. You're talking about all conference. I mean, yes, uh, yes. White regular season and then tournament championship. Yes, ma'am. So you probably talk about six in all. And, and, and again, I know, like you said, with the game evolving, you're sticking true to what you know. You're sticking true to what got you to this point. And I think that's needed more. I think that's something that a lot of people can, you know, relate to more and he said you better pray like heck because you have a social life yes. and I know and I know with the with with today's times that can be a big distraction with the social media and the things of that so what are, what are one of the things that you just you know what do you encourage from your players from the academic standpoint and then from the the athlete standpoint to to stay focused how do you encourage them Yes, uh, we really put emphasis on academic. We got an overall 3.0 GPA overall, you know, as far as our uh, student athletes. And that's something that we put emphasis on. We make sure we get progress reports out like, like two to three weeks. Uh, we have a uh, monitor study hall and then on the road, they study as well. And it's ironic that you uh, mentioned uh, academics because I had a couple of girls this summer that they wanted to play around. So I told them, I said, I promise you, that uh, some of you are going to be eligible, but you're not going to get an opportunity to play. So I've been doing a lot of threading here lately. And I also mentioned the fact that I had my uh, niece that played for me, Rhonda Brown. And um, uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my uh, history. She was the last one in my family. Uh, my sister, she was on drugs and my mom uh, had to adopt them. And I remember my mom dying in bed. She said, hey, you're going to have to save it. This is the last one. So my niece came here, she got distracted. Uh, although she was eligible, I did not let her play her um, that following uh, spring. She didn't get an opportunity to play in the SWAC. And after that, she was on the honor roll every since. So that's something that I tell the story to my players. They had their eyes bucked and like, she did that? Oh yes. So right now I think they really, trying to understand what I'm trying to get across to them because this group right here, a couple of them got distracted this summer. So we really strong and we stay behind them as far as when it comes to academics. And especially with, you know, obviously last year, uh, I believe it was the only co conference only year, right? 
with the, yes. the last year with being the only conference year and uh, going to a 16 and getting to a 16 and four record. And, you know, the, the COVID situation, the pandemic, everything that transpired for you to be able to, you know, gather your troops and to put yourself in a position. I love that. Um, it reminds me a lot of my upbringing, honestly. And, you know, you work now, you play later. That's just, just the rule of thumb that we had. And you and you have to understand that it only makes you better. Like it right. truly only makes you better. So from that academic standpoint and the discipline action that you impose there, which is great, how do you see that, you know, return on the court from your players? Yes, um, I have so many girls that have gone on to be uh, doctors, lawyers, uh, in the government, teachers, uh, and they doing extremely well. And when they come back and tell me if it weren't for the discipline that we bestowed upon them, that they wouldn't be able to persevere on some of the things that they have encountered throughout their life. So um, that gives me um, a lot of pleasure knowing that uh, the system that we have in place have really, really uh, had a positive effect on the players that have uh, played here. And coach, I, I have to ask you, and I love that about them. And I love that they, they're able to come to you. With this being going into your 25th season, do you ever just stop and take it all in and just realize like, I'm really going into my 25th season? Like, do you ever, I understand you're in the moment and I understand, but do you truly realize the history that you're setting? Well, yes and no. I think about uh, uh, this morning, I had to take some leave. My feet are hurting. We started uh, practice and all that standing. You know, it's harder to stand to actually run. And uh, my feet are feeling it. So uh, I know it's been 25 years, but at the same time, I've had a lot of great times. You know, nothing is perfect. Uh, I, I've had some ups and downs or what have you, but um, we just try to stay true to what we are trying to do here at Alabama State. And I've been really fortunate enough to have uh, Clayton Harris, he's been with me all 25 years, as well as Coach Beck McDaniel. So they know the system. They know what, I'm, what is expected you know, of the young ladies and what we're trying to, to instill here at Alabama State. And a lot of my girls, and I've recently, the last, uh, I guess, three years, I've really tried to uh, be a little more um, liberal, per se, understanding that if a player is maintaining a 3-5 or a 3-2, like their junior or senior year, I cut down their library hours. And then when they become seniors, if, if they continue to have a 3.0 or better, they don't have to attend study hall. So it's been uh, really good, some of the changes that we've adjusted to. And I think that I think that plays a big difference. And, you know, the coaches that you have there by your side to be able to help you. And like you said, they know the infrastructure and they know how you like to operate. I truly think that is a blessing in itself. Um, and, and with everything that you can get distracted from, pushing the academic part, pushing the importance of that, I, I truly want to just say thank you because here at the Tunnel Vision, we're about positivity and all we want to see is, is the positive outlook on everything that we exactly. do. Exactly. And, and that can bode so well for everyone, you know, with the positive outlook and having somebody there to hold you accountable, to be able to say, you know, this is what we're doing. This is what we're going to do. So, and for you, obviously, you you know, with the upcoming season and you're getting ready, you said you're back at practice. Uh, is there, is there always, is there goals that you have set at the beginning of the season for your personal self versus the team? Or how does that normally work for you? I'm sorry, it looks like we lost Coach for a second. We'll have her back here in a moment. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. There is no problem. Okay. Glad we, no, we're glad we got you back. Okay. So I was saying it, with the seed, you said you're back at practice. And with the upcoming season and everything, I said, is there anything that you have set aside for yourself for personal goals that you would like to see throughout the season versus anything that you have set aside uh, versus anything that you have for the team? Or does it all just come together in unison? It, well, this year is going to be a little different because we have 10 new players. 
Oh, and wow. uh, so you talk about a lot of teaching and learning is going on right now. But the thing that I am so impressed with is Ayana um, Emmanuel. She's always led us in school and she and Shamaya and uh, Jada, the three of them. And she's showing a lot of leadership. She's really trying to make sure she's a professionist. And now she's finally understand that it's important to give back. She was always consumed with what she was doing. And we have all of these freshmen you talking about seven freshmen, and she's been a jewel trying to really help them uh, do the things that they're supposed to do because she realized without them, it's not go, it's no way that we're going to have a chance of winning a championship. And this is her last go round. And I can see a world of difference uh, in her. And also, Jalen, my uh, seniors in particular. And, and, and you mentioned, I believe she, Ayanna Emanuel, I believe she averaged 16 points last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and she's so competitive because at one point she was averaging like, I think she ended up with 18 points because I think she okay. was flirting like number 10 or something like that. She ended up like third in scoring. Uh, she saw the mother girls because one thing about the swag last year, the girls was putting up some numbers. Yes, they were. And she always was been in like in the top five as far as what she was doing, like 13, yes, 14 points or whatever. That last um, four or five games, she got busy. And her score just went up. She jumped by three or four points. I said, that is amazing. And then the, the, the uh, thing that um, was amazing, I had, it was like Ayana, then Jayla, and then Shamaya. They still stay steady, you know, where they were. She jumped by four, she jumped by at least six people in the scoring category. And she, she works hard as far as, um, getting rebounds, she passes the ball, you know, pretty decently or what have you, but uh, she gets at it. And if we figure out how to play some defense, and that's one of my point of emphasis, uh, this uh, was well, been my point of emphasis since they've been here, but this group of girls, they can score. So they, they weren't um, interested in playing any defense, but now you should see how they try to listen. Like we need to play defense. So they really, really paying attention because they understand a uh, year before last, if we would have just simply got a rebound, we were up. That girl got a put back because other yes, girl can rotate over and we lost in the uh, tournament uh, championship. Yeah. So they understand. But this past year, Jackson, they really went out and got some uh, key players. And I thought they were, they were better than us. And you hate to say a team was better than you, but their right. personnel and um, the girls that they went out uh, and got it made a world of difference. So they jumped a step ahead of us. We fought, but they was actually better than us this past year. And it's a joy just to see the overall football, basketball, whatever the case may be, baseball. It's a joy to see the notoriety and the it's about time. But the HBCU athletics has received. exactly, and it's amazing to see it. And you know, we love to see it, and we root. You know, one of the main things that we see now is how many players, how many athletes want to play for these historic colleges, historic black colleges, I'm sorry, but how many players want to play and understanding that there's no difference. You know, you can, you can still get the same amount of playing time or whatever the case may be. You know, some, some, are, some schools that are on the big side that you, you could go to and you won't play and you'll just right. be sitting there and you'll be wasting. So, you know, to have that opportunity to play to obviously play for historic coaches such as yourself, you know, I think that means a lot, not only for the HBCUs, but that means a lot, that speaks a lot, not only for the HBCUs, but it speaks a lot to you and to your character for well, you, you to be able to do that. And let me, I need to give a shout out to Deion Sanders yeah, because absolutely. he, one thing about it, and I sit and listen to him or whatever, now you already know he's promoting Jackson State, but he's promoting all HBCUs. Every time he can get a nod and um, and try to do something for the other schools, he's doing that as well. So I have to give that to him because normally you'll just be focusing in on your your program, but right. he's for all of the programs. And so in the same way you, out. yes, ma'am, absolutely, mm -hmm. he deserves it. In the same way that you implement your academic side of it, that's the same thing that he does. Yes, and you know the that. I, and I, it's, it's not, you know, because that's not what we do here, but it's not a knock to anybody else, but it's just a, a, a joy to see, 
that the coaches are publicly doing it, that we know, right. you know, this is what you're doing. Because like you said, if the academic side is not right, you're not getting on this court. Exactly. You know? And I just want to ask you for any of uh, future, you know, we are, this is something, this is our fourth season now with Beyond the Game with okay. Tunnel Vision Sports. And we always ask our guests to leave any words of encouragement for any upcoming, whether they want to be an athlete, doctor, lawyer, whatever the case may be. So throughout your life, throughout your experience, what words of encouragement could you leave for the next generation? Yes, and I just finished watching Michelle Obama and listening to her, you could be whatever you want to be. And I just happen to be from the suburbs of Chicago as well. That's my home girl. But uh, it doesn't matter. I didn't start playing basketball until I was a sophomore in high school. And that's the reason why I'm successful now because of athletics. Okay, if it weren't for ath athletics and me playing basketball, there's no telling where I would have been. And uh, I couldn't fight anymore because you get suspended. So it really helped me. So I want all the youngsters, females, males, or what have you to understand is what you put into it is what you get out of. And it doesn't matter if you go to a, HBCU, a power five school, or what have you, it's a place for you. And don't give up on your dreams, just continue to persevere, work hard, and just focus on your academics. And I truly thank you for that, Coach. I, that Every time I ask a guest to leave words of encouragement, I always, you know, listen for myself, I always apply for myself and always mm -hmm. add it because you learn something from everyone. And exactly. you know, no matter what the case may be, you can always learn something new. And I just have to ask, obviously, like you said, you know, you're back in practice, everything is going well. Is there anything that you, obviously you have the freshman, so I get that part, but there, is, is there anything that feels different about this group other than the, the freshman side of it? Yes, it really feels different. Just like I was telling you as far as the leadership, yeah. uh, the girls asking for extra work, coming in the gym on their own, even my little point guard, she had him in there. One day we came to practice. They were there like 30 minutes earlier and she had them, uh, cause I guess um, I was telling her she needed to um, be able to pass better to the post. She had all the posts lined up and making passes to them or what have you, just showing a lot of leadership. And I can just tell they get along better. And uh, that's just uh, um, all indication I feel that if we do the things that we're supposed to do and really buy into um, playing defense, we have a possibility of winning a regular season championship as well as a tournament championship uh, this year because I feel all the players are bought in. And Coach, we're rooting for you. And I wholeheartedly mean that. Uh, one of the unique things about our sports media company is there is no bias. There is, you know, we're not subject to put out anybody's personal information we are strictly on the positive side of things okay. so from myself and everyone else at tunnel vision sports we're wish wishing you a successful season and we can't wait to watch you guys and i'm thankful that you were able to sit down give us the time because i was actually i'm not gonna lie to you i was nervous that i wasn't <laughs> going to get the interview because i had a, a date set and then when they told me that you couldn't do that date i was like oh man i said i hope the next day i pick is right so yes i'm glad so thank you so much. This is thank Beyond you. the Game. I'm your host, Stephen Hayes. Obviously, we have Miss Frida Freeman Jackson, Alabama State women's basketball head coach. And until next time, we'll see you. All right. Go Hornets. <laughs>